The day finally came to say goodbye to the DJI FPV. I just didn't get enough use out of it. It was settling dust and whenever going out I was finding myself picking other quads. So I decided to sell it. But why that is? Well, we will dive right in after the intro. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel, thanks for joining today and sorry for being MIA over the last months. I will post much more regular content from now and thanks to each and every one of you to get me over 1000 subscribers. A big milestone for me and even though it's still a baby channel it really helps to make better content for you guys. Today I want to talk about DJI and in particular the DJI FPV and why I find myself not flying it anymore. It just settling dust and there are several reasons for that. So let's dive right in. But first hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so that we can get to new grounds and taking that channel further. It really helps the algorithm out a lot if you do it early in the video and I will really appreciate that. Thank you very much to all and every one of you. I will also talk about other engineering related topics and cars. So one car is coming to the channel as a FPV flying base and that car is doing a lot of things pretty great. I have two Cybertrucks on order but they are not coming in anytime soon. So I had to bridge that kind of gap with something else. That car is doing a lot of things pretty great and I am really looking forward to share that content with you guys. But for now. Let's get back to the real topic here and the DJI FPV. It is marketed by DJI as the all-in-one, ready to fly, easy to get into FPV system and in my opinion it really is not that. There are several reasons for that and I will try to highlight the most important ones. But for one, well, before you really fly a physical quad it really saves you a lot of headache and money if you learn in the simulator first the basic steps how to fly a quad. And then you want to learn how to build a quad because you want to repair it by yourself. So if you build your first quad from the ground up it will really help you down the road to repair things and things will break if you're getting into FPV. So what could be a better approach in getting into FPV? Well let's take a look at the AOS. It is one of the better frames and building it up from the ground. Well you have a very good quality frame, you know how to build it and it flies great. The disc load is much lower than from the DJI FPV, it performs better, it flies better and it gives you in the first steps learning how to fly much better abilities. Mid and long term it's also a way more cost efficient if you know how to repair your own equipment. So you will not really get around that. However, if you really want something ready to fly from the very beginning, you could choose the Evoque. It is a great flying quad, it has also a very low disc load, especially comparing to the DJI FPV. You can learn down the road how to repair it because it's completely repairable for you and you will have better image quality. Whatever you put on there, a GoPro or something from DJI like the Action 2 or from Insta, the 360. Whatever you choose, you are having control over when you upgrade that camera system and what kind of image quality you are aiming for. And that is in your control. With the DJI FPV, well, you don't really have that choice. Sure, you can put a GoPro on a DJI FPV, but then it really flies like a school bus. When thinking about long range, the Raycon 6 comes to mind. Designed by Dave C, it is a very high efficient, low disc load, long flight time, 
quad and it is a good quality frame, it is repairable and I like it so much that I made my own interpretation for this frame and built my own Recon 6 with a different flight controller and different motors, making it even lighter and more efficient for better long range flights. That content also will come up on the channel sometime soon, so stay tuned for that. Coming back to the argument that the DJI FPV is a good trainer. Well, if you want to learn how to fly a quad, you have to fly in acro mode. And that means you will crash a lot. And you cannot afford to crash the DJI FPV a lot because it will not survive that. A very lightweight quad, like the Meteor 65 for example, well, it will also crash very lightly and there are not many forces working on the frame when crashing and bumping into a wall, so you can get a first feel how to fly. Those whoops are however a bit more difficult to fly than real quads which are a bit bigger, so there is also a downside to the form factor. I really like to emphasize and highlight the point that there is a variety of quads and each category is doing something best. So there cannot be one quad which is doing everything great. If you want to do that and if a company tries that, you will have the DJI FPV which is not doing anything very good. It is doing everything a little bit but mid long term that is not making you happy and not keeping you motivated to take it from the shelf and flying it. When I go out to fly I like to choose my tools. When I go for long range I choose a different quad than when I go for a freestyle flight. It's a bit like when I want to get a nail in the wall I use a hammer and not a screwdriver for hammering the nail in. Sure I believe I could get it in but it will not be a very good experience. The DJI FPV is at the end of its life cycle and alongside the new V3 DJI goggles, rumors say that the new system will be more like in the form factor of a Cinewhoop. That will be the new approach from DJI to get into the FPV market in grabbing some piece of the cake that way. But I believe that is exactly the wrong approach. When a company invests in the future, they should invest in making the greatest products possible and not trying to make products to grab market share. And that is what I feel over the last months uh, DJI is more and more focused on. Short term, mid term want to get the best out of the market and not really being long term oriented, doing the best for the community, making the best products. That being said and looking a little bit down the road, when DJI comes out with their system being a whoop style kind of integrated all in one ready to fly, well the Cinerase 20 will do the job just great and fine. It is not necessary investing a lot of money into an all integrated DJI system for that. And it gives more flexibility again in terms of camera choices for whatever kind of image quality you are aiming for and the cameras can always be upgraded and adjusted to your personal needs. In FPV we have a variety of tasks and a variety of flights we want to perform and for each flight we want to choose a different kind of quad, whether that is long range or in bad weather or if it's freestyle. For freestyle my choice was the Evoque recently and it's just a great quad ready to fly out of the box, even for beginners for just getting started in FPV. Great to repair. Looking at DJI and how their behavior as a company and company culture recently was is quite worrisome to me. DJI without a question created a very great digital system. And we went out and bought. We went and bought our Vistas, our air units and we invested in our V1 and V2 goggles. We enjoyed and we got used to fly digital FPV. So DJI knew there is no competition and they knew they don't need to move if they don't want to. So they didn't listen to the community. We were desperately asking for things like canvas mode which are easy to implement. To display OSD elements what we really need like LQ and other things. But DJI did not move, they just didn't give us what we want, because they didn't need to, they could sell anyways. Please don't misunderstand, I don't hate DJI, I just really don't like their behavior in the recent times and how they were treating the FPV community, not really listening. 
Choose for yourself where you want to go next and where you want to invest your money in. But the great thing is that you have a choice. With Walksnack coming up, a new digital system, hardware-wise very capable, software-wise, well, maybe still there's room for improvement. We are living in exciting times for FPV and there is a lot of exciting great stuff coming up. And the competition between the companies will make everything just better for us, I believe strongly so. So what is happening from now for the channel? Well, I will share all content I really love. And that is FPV, all engineering related topics, cars and stuff. Well, leave also your comments below what you like to see. Next topic will be the FPV flying base, the car I was choosing to bridge the gap until the cyber trucks are delivered. I have them on order from very early times when they were announced and maybe, hopefully, finally, next year could be the year that I can take delivery. That would be really great. And as always guys, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the day, stay safe and see you in the next one.